We're going to do L'Hopital's rule to, to solve limits that in the past you might not have been able to solve them or you could only solve them graphically. For instance, uh, this first problem. Oh, that really would help if I would, I would do that. I don't even think I even, let me just pause this. All right, back to the recording. So we got a limit here. And in the old days, what's the first technique we used to solve a limit? What's the very first method we learned? Plug in a zero. I mean, plug in the zero. OK, so that would look like this. If I say just plug and chug, that's called substitution, right? That would be 2 times a negative 1 squared minus a negative 1 minus 3 and negative 1 plus 1. That equals to a negative 1 squared is 1. 2 times 1 is 2. Minus minus 1 is plus 1. Then I got a minus 3 over a 0. That's 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 minus 3 is over. That's going to be equal to what? 0 over 0. And so we gave that a name back then. It was indeterminate. So when you see this happen, make sure that if it's like an open-ended problem, make sure you let the rater know that you know this is indeterminate, 0 over 0. Don't do this. I'd rather, as a matter of fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm actually going to erase the equal sign now because, I don't know, one year they got on us from the college board and said, don't let them write equals 0 over 0. Really? Yeah, because it's not really true because 0 over 0 doesn't mean anything. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So what I'm going to do is put an arrow. 0 over 0. How's that? That it's not really equal to 0 over 0 since we don't know what 0 over 0 means. I don't know if they constantly are being that picky, but anyway, if it's indeterminate, how else could I have solved it? What would be the next thing I would have done? Do again? Mm, no, what else did we do in the old days? If that's a quadratic, could we have tried factoring? So I could try the factoring and see what happens. Can I factor 2x squared minus x plus 3? I can do it the old-fashioned way. 2 times a negative 3 is a negative 6. Factors of a negative 6 have to be a negative 3 or a 2, or a 1 and a negative 6, or a negative 1 and a 6, or a negative 2 and a 3. Do any of those add up to a negative 1? The first set I tried. So that would turn into the limit as x approaching a 1 of a, well, let me actually finish the factoring over here. That becomes 2, uh, be a, that was a negative 2? Two? Mm. 2x, my method is keep this coefficient from it. 2x, well, that, that was a negative 2, right? And that was a negative 3. So 2x minus 3 and a 2x plus 2. And then since these two both have 2's in it. The actual factoring is 2x minus 3. Those two both have a 2, so throw the extra 2 out. Like factor out a 2, but throw it away. Mm -hmm. x plus 1. Now I'll use FOIL. Is that truly the same thing? 2x times oh, x is a... It yeah, it canceled the 2 out. I mean, if you want to just pull the 2 out, you could have, but, but th this is the factored form. And so if I write it out there, 2x minus 3 times x plus 1 over an x plus 1, magic happened. This canceled. See that? So now let me use substitution again. Equals to 2x, that's 2, times a negative 1 minus 3, all over a 1. So what is 2 times a negative 1 minus 3? Negative SJ? Oh. Negative 5. Negative 5. So I just solved this problem without L'Hopital's rule. I solved it the old-fashioned way. But the reason that you're going to love L'Hopital's rule is because that took a lot of work. There are people sitting in this room right now who might not have been able to factor this if their life depended on it. I don't believe you. Sir, it's true. You do not understand how bad I am. 
I think you might have taken longer, but you know you could probably try every possible combination and you would have gotten it eventually. All right, so let me go and show you what L'Hopital's rule is, and then we're going to talk about this back to our original paper. Oh, by the way, the answers are at the bottom. I gave you a paper. All the answers are at the bottom to keep us honest. Let's check it out. Negative 5 was the answer to number 1. Good. So we're right. All right, let's do another one. Um, let's check it out. We're going to approach 3. Okay, Gilbert, we're being recorded. Oh. Plugging in a 3. 3 squared minus 3 minus 3 over 3 minus 2. That doesn't look too bad. What's 3 squared minus 3? Nine. 9 minus 3 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. Is it really a 3? Because it's looking like it's working pretty good. 9 minus 3 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. 3 over 1. So the answer is 3. So do I use L'Hopital's rule? No. no. You don't have to. And it won't work anyway. Oh, because it's not indeterminate. It's not indeterminate. That's the secret. Don't get fooled. You know, don't fall for it. Okay, so let's jump down yeah, to... Do we have to plug in every single one for it? Yeah, you want to check it with substitution first to make sure what's... Or even with factoring. We got lucky up here that when we factored it, it worked out. But what if hypothetically the denominator was x minus 1? That wouldn't have canceled, would it have? No. So you'd be saying, oh, man, it didn't work. I have to use L'Hopital's rule. Okay? This one, I could have done it with graphing. I did it with factoring and simplifying. And I did it with L'Hopital's rule. Let's do the third, third one here, number 5. I'm, I'm doing it straight down because it's easier to, for me to scroll down. So I'm plugging in a 0 right off the bat. Plugging in a 0. I get a 0 here. I get a 1 minus e to the 0. So what does it mean again if like, you have a 0 on top and that means it's a number for the denominator? Or, like, that would just be 0. Okay, and then if the 0 is at the bottom, that's undetermined, uh, right? If, no, if the 0 is in the bottom and a constant's on the top, then the answer, I know what you're thinking of yeah. now. That's where you get an infinity or a negative infinity. Huh. That's when we grab a number from oh. the top and from the bottom and see what happens. That's what oh, we. that's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. that's what you were talking about. Yeah. You plug in any number close to the zero, mm -hmm. and if you plug in a positive number, you see what happens. If it stays positive, then you know it's positive infinity. Mm -hmm. If it went negative, then you know the answer is a negative infinity. Oh, okay. Yeah, she, she was questioning this thing. Yeah. You get a constant over, over zero. That always means some sort of infinity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sir, I also have another question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the limit as x approaches infinity does find the horizontal asymptote. As infinity, why not negative? Oh, wait, wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do both. You do both. Because you could have two different horizontal asymptotes. It's been so long. It has been a long time. That's why this is a good review for L'Hopital's. It also reviews some basic limits. Yeah, it's because it was one of the questions It's in there, right? Okay. You do know it. So what is 0 over 1 minus e to the 0? First of all, what is e to the 0, Michelle? One. E to the 0 is what? E to the zero is, one. say it again? One. Very good. One. So that approach is 0 over 1 minus 1. Zero. So I'm not going to use equal. I'm going to go, oh, no, 0 is 0, indeterminate again. Oh, no. <laughs> what can I do? Can I factor it? No. That one's not factorable. Could I graph it and find it? Sure. Sure, if it was calculator allowed. But I will write right here, by L'Hopital, you should let them know why you're doing what we're doing, because we're going to do this. I'm going to do, I'm going to do this. I'm going to write out the problem. x to 0, x over 1 minus e to the x is the limit. Wait, okay, sir. Yes, I wouldn't do it on a multiple choice. Yeah, because I was like... No. Okay. I'm just giving you all things in case the document. So here's my original problem, and I'm saying, by L'Hopital, this is equal to basically the derivative of the top, which is 1, over the derivative of the bottom, which is... Okay, I hope I got somebody who can do it. Alyssa, help me out with the derivative of this one. Hold on, sir. It's, I'm still writing. 
the hardest of, hardest what we've done so far. Got it, Lisa? No, the bottom part? Yeah. Oh, yeah, what she said. Oh, that's what she said, huh? <laughs> Negative e to the thing. x. That's right. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x yeah. times the derivative of x. Well, x is going to be a derivative of 1. So that's perfect. So what I can do now is plug in the oh. 0 now. So what you're doing is, wait, OK, so instead, let's say we don't put by local tab x. If we make sure to indicate that those two are equal to each other, we would still get the point. Right? I think so. I just try to go above and beyond to make sure that they know what you're doing. They, they do know that you're going to have to use L'Hopital, so it's not like you're going to, they're, they're, if you didn't notice it, if they didn't see you write anything else, they're going to go, why the heck are they doing They won't say that. They know why you're doing it. But this just helps them understand that not only do you know what to do, but you know why. You're not just a trained monkey. <laughs> that you actually know why I'm doing it, because L'Hopital said this is true. So I plug in the zero now, and I get one over... Over what? Negative what? I get 1 over negative 1. Final answer? Negative 1. Now, that's kind of cool because we could. Huh? We're right. Oh, it's down there? Thank God. And so let, let's, uh, let me go to the next page. I'm going to do the same thing. All right, let's try another harder one. That, that was, look at that, 7. I don't even have a clue what we could do with that problem. I don't see any factoring available. I just got plug and chug, and then if that doesn't work, if I get indeterminate, and if it's not indeterminate, then I'm up a crick. I don't know how else to solve it other than graphing. But You're up a creek without, a paddle. without the paddle, that's right. So I plug in the one, it's going to give me equals to a one minus a one an plus ln of one. Oh, I don't oh yeah, there's an answer. It's at the bottom of the paper. 1 cubed is 1, <laughs> minus 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2. That's equal to 1 minus 1 is 0. What is the natural log of 1? Zero. It is 0. See how smart you guys really? E to the 1 is 0. E to the 1 is E. Yeah. Wait, e to the, the 0 one. is 1. Yeah, there you go. That's why. Because then you know how you after, okay, yeah. E to, e to the zero is one. one. That means the interpretation was the natural log of this answer has to be zero. That's how I always go back to myself. So that gives me one minus three is a negative two yeah, plus two. 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 That gives me approaching what? Sorry, a zero sorry. over a zero. So you can see it's L'Hopital. So, so by L'Hopital's rule, SJ, by L'Hopital, because I'm showing all of this, I'm showing all of this, then I can say is equal to the limit as x approaches a 1 of derivative left to right of the top. Abiel, you do the top. top. Plus one plus nope. <laughs> the derivative of 1 is Nothing. Nothing. 0. And that's a negative one, that's right. Plus, what's the derivative of natural log of x? Natural log. du over u. 1 over x. 1 over x. All over. Derivative of x cubed? 3x squared. 3x squared. Minus 3. Minus 3. That's it. That's it, right? Yes, sir. So now we can plug in our, our, three, uh, our, I mean our 1 now. So let's pause because got a visitor. <laughs> and we're back. And what did we, why did we, why did we leave? With the graph. Oh, we had a visitor. Oh, yeah. OK, so now we didn't plug in a 1 yet. Not yet. Adiel, plugging in a 1. Negative 1 <laughs> plus a 1, a one. 1 over a negative 1 over. No, it's positive 1. It's 1. OK, 1 over 1, so it's no negative. OK, 1 over 1. And then a th 1 goes into 3x squared. It gives me a 3 minus a 3. Oh, my God. Look what just happened. <laughs> Was this supposed to happen? No. Mm -hmm. What happened? It's still indeterminate. It's still indeterminate. Which means that we can solve it. We can. I mean, we can factor it out. 
<laughs> what if, what if L'Hopital was so smart that uh, he said that he you, can, you can do L'Hopital again? What? Okay. What? What the heck is that? So here we go. So let me, let me, let me say, we are now at, we have the limit as x approaches 1 of a negative 1 plus 1 over x over 3x squared minus 3. And since we already got L'Hopital once, we're doing L'Hopital a second time. So I'm going to write by L'Hopital again, second time. That gives me, all right, now I wonder who can do the derivative of the top. And I hope you don't say, oh, I need to use a quotient rule. No. No, but look at the top, though. There's actually a quotient in there. But why don't, why don't we just pretend it looks like this, though? Negative 1 plus x to the negative 1. Would that be easier to do the derivative of? Okay, so what does that give you? Hold on. Limit as x approaches 1. What's the derivative of the top? Just a negative 1 over... What's the derivative of the bottom? Uh, 6x. Just a 6x. Now plug in the 1. So it's a negative 1 over 6. Yeah. Is that the answer in the bottom? Yes, it is. Isn't that a miracle? Repeated L'Hopital's rule. It could happen, and it did. Huh? Was he French? I think so. And I've seen two spellings for the name. I've seen it L. H O P I T A L, and I've actually seen it. I think because us uh, white white Americans, we think everything has to be anglicized, so we called it L H O S P I T A L. Hospital rule, la hospital rule, but it is l'hôpital. It's not that. So nice. Let's do it eleven. Let's do eleven. Oh, oh, yeah, I skipped it accidentally. <laughs> Well, you know what? You, do, you, do we need to see the graph of this one that we just did? Do you want to see the graph of the one we just did, the double L'Hopital? Sure. Oh, no. oh, is it hard to type in? Yeah, I say no. Okay, I say no. All right, number nine. We're doing number nine. Okay, who have I not picked on yet? Gilbert. I haven't picked on Gilbert. What happens when I put, oh, it's an infinity problem. We haven't done infinity stuff in a long time. What happens when I plug in infinity? It looks like this. Infinity squared minus 1 infinity. over... Infinity. Oh, okay. Ah, interesting. You're off fast. You're being recorded. Infinity squared minus 1 over 4 times infinity squared plus infinity. Did you hear what Sandy just said? <laughs> Sandy just said she predicts the answer is close to zero because we have more on the bottom than the top. But this actually turns into what is infinity squared? Infinity. And if you add one more to it? Infinity. Thank you. Like so what's four infinity. times infinity squared? Infinity. Plus infinity. And beyond. So it's still really just infinity over infinity. But Sandy has a point. She knows that the bottom's getting bigger faster than the top. So as it approaches infinity, it's probably approaching zero. That's a very good guess. Very good guess. But, <laughs> well, we're going to find out. This, guess what this is? It's indeterminate. Uh, why is it indeterminate? Because we don't know what infinity or infinity means, for real. So guess what I can do by L'Hopital? I will do the derivative of the top and the bottom. 2x, Two X over 8x. 8x plus 1. And what happens when I plug in infinity now? Does all our problems get solved? No. Where am I at now? 2 times infinity? Infinity. Eight, 8 times infinity plus 1 is still infinity. So guess what I have to do again? You have to do it again. L'Hopital's rule again. Limit as x approaches infinity. Sir, is that number? Which one? This one right here? It was an 8. So 2 over, two over da da, which is 1 fourth, which is small. It is close to 0. Interesting. By the way, just to remind you, and Sandy started talking about this earlier, 
This is the same problem if I asked you, how would you find the horizontal asymptote? That is the horizontal asymptote. Well, we're going to graph this one and prove it. So let's pause it. We'll come back and we'll paste this one here somewhere. Pause. Back to the drawing board. Let's see. Uh, let's do 11. Let's do 11. Approaching infinity again. Real quick. What's infinity? If I just use substitution, what's infinity squared cubed? Infinity. What's e to the infinity? infinity? How do you know? E to the x e looks the like this. E is actually a constant, not a... It's a constant, but it's increasing as x gets bigger, it goes up oh, and up, yeah. right? So as it goes to infinity, even out here, it's way over here, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as this gets bigger, so does that get bigger. So it's approaching infinity. So you're right. That's, that's, that's indeterminate. So by L'Hopital, because we say this is indeterminate, right? It's the limit as x approaches infinity. What's the derivative of x cubed? 2x squared. Nope. 3. I mean 3x squared. Yep. SJ, what's the derivative of e to the x? 1. Nope. Oh, e x on x squared. Yeah, it's the same thing, e to the x. And if your, if your exponent was better than x, you got to multiply by the derivative of this exponent, but the derivative of that one is just a 1, so that's what we leave it as. So now we plug in infinity now. What's infinity squared times 3? Infinity. infinity. What's e to the infinity? We just said a minute ago. So guess what I got to do? L'Hopital again equals what's the derivative of 3x squared? And what's the derivative of e to the x? E to the x. And what happens if I plug in infinity now? Still that. Can you believe it? I'm doing it again. I got to do L'Hopital's again. But, sir, but isn't e to the x always going to stay e to the it x? It certainly will. But right now, look what happens. What's the limit of, so by L'Hopital, I do the limit as x approaches infinity of what's the derivative of 6x? Zero. Over e to the x. Now plug in infinity. See what happens. 6 over infinity. So it's close to zero. Anything constant over infinity is always going to be zero. Oh. Anything except for a function, because a function could get close to zero but not necessarily be zero. Like we had that answer of 0.25 earlier. So that gives you a zero. Any constant divided by infinity is always zero. That's by definition. So let's just look at the graph of this one. It should be easy to graph. It was just uh, x cubed over e to the x. So we'll pause this. I don't know when the bell's going to ring, so I'm just going to. It's following Friday's uh, schedule. So oh, Friday's schedule. Wait, yeah, oh. yeah, I think Why? we're doing Friday's schedule. We left that. Wait, you, you can't pull things up. Okay. All right. Um, let's, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the other page because I gave you a little more here. Okay. Let me go. To, I'm going to go to this page here again. With, it's a clean copy. What L'Hopital's rule says that if you've proven that this goes to 0 over 0, mm -hmm. and we say it's indeterminate, mm -hmm. we're allowed to use L'Hopital's rule, and the rule is very simple. L'Hopital's rule says that if you have the limit as x approaches some c of some function over another function, and it is going to be indeterminate for a lot of reasons. There's a lot of reasons to be indeterminate, but there's zero of zero is one of them. L'Hopital, what's that? Is that g of x? Yes, g, there's two different functions. One's f, one's called g. L'Hopital rule says that if this happens, then what you can do is do the limit as x approaches the c and just take the derivative of each of these pieces. But don't use quotient rule. It's the top and the bottom separate functions. So SJ, what's the derivative of the top? All right, look at it. You should know. Easy. The derivative of what? Of the top. Of the whole thing? Of the whole thing. You, you forgot to how to do the power rule of a quadratic. Keep going. Times 
4x minus 1. See, you didn't forget. And I'd be able, what's the derivative of the bottom? 1. 1. So that's just 4x minus 1. So what L'Hopital said, that if you get indeterminate, then the answer is the same as the limit of the derivative of top and bottom. Now I can use my plug and chug. So, well, I don't know why I wrote C now, because I was actually doing approaching a negative 1. So go ahead. So I don't know why I didn't show the more detailed of f prime. Maybe I'll do that. Let me, for the person who's not in here, let me erase all that hard. Oh, man, is that the eraser? Ah. Oh, well. I'll, I'll do it on the next one. I didn't want to waste SJ's work anyway. So if you plug it in now, you plug in the C, which was a negative 1. What's 4 times a negative 1? And then I minus 1 over 1. Do I get the same answer? Yes. Was that a lot faster and simpler? Yeah. Now, there was another thing you could have done. Let me go state as a picture. It's play now. So there's the picture of the problem we just did. And we were approaching uh, x equals 2 is 0. What was our answer? Negative one. Negative then, one. Then I may not have it right because I don't think as I approach we're approaching a zero. zero yeah. What well, where am I getting a negative one? It doesn't look like it to me. I'll zoom in on it if it'll let me. I'm not going to I'm going to zero. Because negative one would be here. There's Do negative one. I may have keyed the function wrong, but you told me it was right. Well, it, it I only x over 1 minus e to the x. So let me pause it again. OK, got the correct graph. Sandy was right. I hit a negative, not a minus for this right here, and it didn't graph right. Ladies and gentlemen, so as you look at the picture, as x approaches 0 from the left and from the right, What's the answer as I approach from the left? Negative one. And from the right? Negative one. So that's why it is negative one by L'Hopital's rule and by the graph. Questions? All right, back to the recording. Here are two graphs. Here's the original graph. And we mentioned before I hit pause that when we go to infinity, it's the same thing as looking for an horizontal asymptote, remember? So as we approach infinity, it looks like I should be going, approach infinity going this way. So I zoom in, and I'll bring up this picture here. As we approach infinity, I went real far. Let's see, how far did I go? I went to 88, 90, whatever. And if you look at the y value here, right here, <laughs> notice this is a horizontal line. And how high is it? Can't tell? Well, maybe it'll let me, uh, well, let me zoom in. There it goes. There it is. See the line? See that? 0.25? It's a one fourth. What was our answer? So that's my horizontal asymptote as I approach infinity. So that's kind of cool, I think. So here's the graphs. When we first graph it, it doesn't look very exciting at all, because look, at it doesn't look like the answer is going to be what we said. We said the answer was 0. But if you go towards farther to infinity, which I don't know how far I went. Let's see. Uh, I'm at 300 or something. or th Yeah. I'm far to the right. Notice the horizontal asymptote at, x, at y equals 0 matches up. All right. All days is we could graph it if it didn't work. And so I'm going to go to my calculator, and I'll paste the picture back up here, just to show you, just to show you. So wasn't there the one, did, wasn't there the one where like, you take the, num the closest number below it and graph it? I think that's an estimation thing, isn't it? I, I, I don't remember exactly that technique. But let me go to the calculator for a minute. OK, so I'm going to paste the picture. Uh, I think I do it from here. Okay, there it is. Picture. Which one's picture? 
Oh, darn it. Is it the first one? Is that it? Yeah, picture, all picture. And it was that picture right here. Make it smaller. Save it in there. There it is. Okay, so there's the picture. So I graphed it, and I'll change my pen to something you can see on top of this. If I zoom in at negative 1, right here, what's the y value? So as I approach a negative 1 from the left and a negative 1 from the right, it approaches a negative 5. Well, then, if it's a one-sided limit, but when we do a limit, we have to, it has to be the same both sides. Okay. okay. Now. Oh, no, it's not. So we, you, if it was a calculator problem, you could just graph and look. You don't have to factor. You don't have to do L'Hopital's rule. But chances are this problem would not let you use a calculator. It'd be one of those that you could not use a calculator. Okay, so that worked out for there. I'm going to go to that one and post it as a picture for those that are watching this at home. So I'm going to pause it again, <laughs> go to my calculator, go to the other page problems are there. This page here. First problem is, uh, looks just like we were doing, but he gave, the, he gave you the answer in the problem. Look care, you didn't get both sides? Oh, no, yeah, I did. Oh. And you didn't Yeah, that's kind of a part of the requirements when it's two-sided. So if you plug in 1, what is 5 natural log of 1? Somebody. 5 over x. No, we're not doing derivative. We just said I'm plugging it in. Oh, a 0. Natural log of 1 is 0? I think you're right. And then I got 1 minus 1, so that's going to be, a, it's approaching 0 over 0. That's indeterminate. So he graphed it first. So my, my opinion probably is, look at here. The answer is probably going to be, if you look at this graph, as you approach one from the right and one from the left, the answer is probably 5. The answer is probably 5. And, and if you have the graph, that's fine. But let's prove it with L'Hopital. By L'Hopital equals to the limit as x approaches 1, what is the derivative of 5 natural log of x? 5 over, x. 5 over x. Over, what's the derivative of x minus 1? 1. 1. So what is 5 over 1 over 1? x over 5. No. 5 over 1 over 1 is what you said. Yeah, 5 over 1 over 1. It's 5. Which is what we said the answer was, right? 5. Yeah. Look at this ugly one. I, it's so ugly that he gave us the answer again. The answer is probably 3 as I approach from the right and I approach from the left. But let's do it with uh, plugging it in. What's 3 times 0? Zero? Zero. What's uh, 0 plus one? 1? What's natural log of 1? Zero. Again, this is approaching 0 over 0. So it's a L'Hopital to save the day limit as x approaches 0. What's the derivative of the top? 3. Three. What's the derivative of the bottom? 0. Derivative. The derivative of natural log of u is du over u. Oh, x, I mean the, 1 over x plus 1. 1 over x plus 1. That's right. So if you plug in 0 now, what happens? You got 3 over 1 plus 0 plus 1. So it's 3. 3. So it worked. L'Hopital worked. Same answer. So tell me about L'Hopital's rule. Do you remember doing this on cons? Yes. Did he, di did he give you some that was rep rep repeated, L'Hopital? Uh, like like we, had one, we had one that went three times, didn't we? Oh, no. It wouldn't go like oh. three times. So it's good to know that it can happen. Uh, this is a different kind of indeterminate. We've only done 0 over 0, infinity over infinity. Mm -hmm. This is different, Michelle. This is indeterminate also. Look what happens. And he says only going from the right. The reason is you can't take the natural log of a negative number. 
So what is 5 times x squared if x is a 0? 0. And what is the natural log of 0? Natural log of 0 is 1? Yeah. It is. I wonder why this is not the answer 0. Makes me wonder. I, I, don't, I don't think that there should be an issue with this graph. If someone could graph it, please. 5x squared times natural log of x. Does it look OK? My battery's low, sir. Make sure it you charge it up out. tonight. Oh, you, you have batteries. Yeah. Batteries, batteries. Put, put new ones in. Or is your, is your batteries or charging? charging. Where's Ellen? Ellen's on the left-hand side. Ellen over at stove? Yep. It came out zero, no problem. Yeah. So I don't know why they think this is a L'Hopital problem. It graphed OK? Oh, no, yeah. zero error. Ah, zero error. It says it's zero, though, if that's zero. They say it's not zero. Because why would that be a problem? Hmm. I thought you couldn't Can't do what? Well, the problem is this looks like a 0 times a 1, but see, it's not exactly a 1 because it never, it never can be 1 because x can never be 0. It's approaching a 1. So it never is going to be a 1. Well, the natural log function looks like this. Looks like that, right? Yeah. That's the natural log function. Yeah. Why can it, and we're only going, we, we'll, we'll, never, we'll never approach zero. It's, 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 it's vertical asymptote. It never gets to the zero. So it's technically a negative infinity. It wasn't what you said it was. Because it's from the right. This is actually a zero times infinity problem, a negative infinity problem. That's the indeterminate part. It's not really what you thought it was. Because this is, when you graph a natural log, that's what it looks like all by itself. Just graph natural log by itself, and you'll see that it never can be a zero. It never will get there. Because it's actually going to be negative infinity. As you approach it from the left, you'll never get to this axis here. You'll never hit this. You're going to get closer and closer and closer. So when you have this, we've got to make this into something where I can use L'Hopital's rule. So here's the trick. This piece can be written underneath. We've got to make a fraction out of it. Limit as x goes to 0 only from the right. That natural log of x stays on top. The bottom becomes, uh, well, the 5 can stay there. It's the x squared can be written down here. How's that? With a negative 2. And now when you plug in the uh, 0, now I get 0 over, I get 0, no, I get a negative infinity over 0. Negative infinity over 0, which I don't know what that means. So it's indeterminate. It's just the same as indeterminate as this thing up here. So now since it's a fraction, because L'Hopital's rule only works for fractions, I can use L'Hopital's rule on it. What's a derivative of 5 natural log of x? 5 over x. It is 5 over x. I had to think twice. Over. What's a derivative of x to the negative 2? Negative 2x. To the? Negative. Wait, no? Negative 2x. No, but negative you, 1. Negative 1. There you go. Yeah, there you go. And so what happens if I plug in 0 now? What's 5 over 0? Zero? 0. Nope. Well, it's an infinity. Remember? Oh, it's still Remember? 5 over infinity. That's an infinity. So. And then what is uh, negative 2 times x to 0 to the negative 1? Again, that's, an, that's infinity again. Because that's 1 over x. That's infinity over infinity here. So what's going to happen is you've got to use L'Hopital rule again. 
I think I need a clean slate for this problem because I'm running out of room on that one. I'll just add a page. But you said the bell rings at 40? Yeah. And then I, we're done. <laughs> Bell's going to ring probably. Or it's not going to ring. They're still testing. All right, guys.